By the end of it, wait till I bottle flip this bad boy. Oh, don't that. This, table. that is a heavy This thing bottle. weighs four and a half pounds, dude. And welcome oh, back. I was like, I don't know where that's supposed to land. <laughs> We're the bourbon junkies. He's Dan O'Shawn. And tonight, Today, we review tomorrow. Kentucky Peerless Distilling Co. Did I say Kentucky? Yeah. Peerless. It does bourbon. say Kentucky. That's why. Peerless bourbon from Kentucky. Barrel proof. The bourbon. I'm using that. There you go. Hit it. All right, so um, this bottle was graciously sent to us by one sir named Austin the Hubbard the I Seventh. You don't have a sticker on that. How this, do you know he's the Seventh? How, I don't need a sticker on the bottles that have Team Dan written on them because I know true. exactly who they came from. I forgot he did that on all the bottles. So, needless wow. to say, this, is a, to this is a Team Dan bottle. Yeah, it's a barrel proof whiskey, right? Oh, I'm well aware of what I'm getting myself into. Peerless Distillery. This is a sweet mash, which means they don't reuse their mash. Yep, it's a new mash every they time. They remaker. Um, seems expensive to me. Could be wrong. So they only usually like reuse like a little part. Yeah, but they don't reuse the entire thing. It's still more expensive than the sweet mash. Yeah, it is. Sounds expensive. It's then. just that you get like um, the the same germination basically. It's for dude. It's obviously for consistency in batching. You're absolutely right. I Dan. know that. <laughs> Genius. Anyways. You're something. This is 109 proof, oh. and uh, it's about four years old, I think. Give it a No, I think it's four. Ish. Ish. We're going to say ish on that they one. Don't give an age. They do not give an age. I was going to say. They do ish. tell you that it is non chill filtered. It's a strictly Ooh. sweet mash. There is no water added, oh, and okay. it's barrel proof. Killing it. Those four things, wow. I don't no know if I. No water added, it's 109. Yeah. It's not very high. That's what barrel proof means. No water I added. I know, but it's like not very high. No, it's definitely, they might, they like, might, I think they have low entry. Somewhere in my mind that like didn't click, it's got to be low entry. I could be very wrong. It doesn't have to be that wild turkey 17. That also aged in a swamp. Just so. In literally in the swamp. Yeah. Um, they didn't even put it in a rick house. They just chucked the barrels into the swamp. Listen, we have been vocal about our feelings on our peerless rye. Not great. Initially, there wasn't great. we just thought peerless rye was Hated <laughs> bottle. What? We, we found out later in life that Just ours was bad. Our Peerless Rye is bad. Peerless yeah. Rye is not bad. No. We actually like a lot of Peerless Rye we've had now. It's not the price. Um, yeah, it was, well, it's come down in price, which is yeah. good. This is $80. It's four years old. It is barrel proof. Oh my gosh. It seems high. Oh, oh wow, my, my grade just dropped. I didn't have one yet, and it's it already bucks. dropped. Now here's the thing. George Stag is, Listen, you know, 60. How much? George T. Stagg is not 60, I, well, but Stagg, Stagg Jr. Jr. might be. Yeah. So, um, George T. Stagg 60 if you hit it in like listen, a fire ball and buy a couple yeah, spots. That's true. Um, so anyway. Oh no. <laughs> how much do you think that bottle costs? The, like, how much the are glass? we paying for the glass? Oh. 30 bucks. Yeah. That's a $50 whiskey in there. I mean, it's barrel proof. I almost got tricked in buying Lusty Claw because of the bottle, so. I paid 125 for our tainted Peerless Rye because of the bottle. It's doing its job. That bottle's doing God's work, dude, for their marketing. Very cool bottle. That's like if you took big red gum and just put it on top of a piece of like oak oh. and just kind of made a sauna out I of that. I'm such a fan of how it tastes. It smells warm. Yes. It's cinnamon. Yep. Oaky. Okay. Mm. I don't know about oak. Delightful. What, you don't get oak out no, of that? No, I get. There's a Are little, you there's a small youth, there's a grain note. Yeah. I think it comes through as like a peanut brittly shelly type deal. Okay. Nope. And, that, and that's the same uh, area yes, as that, actually the, the woodiness. Agree. Unfortunately, I smelled it again. I get the shells of peanuts. The dry husk. And I think I, that's 100% got to be a, a young distillate thing. This smells like, um, this smells like those hot nuts taste. Mmm. And when I say that, nobody's gonna have any idea what I'm talking about. One person. But I did say hot nuts and how they taste. Mm -hmm. People will enjoy that. Yep. They're actually food. <laughs> they are. They're deep fried uh, peanuts. peanuts. They're in the shell though. Yeah. But and you can eat the shell though because they're deep that, fried. That's the thing it's is still full of when, fat. when you eat the shell. Yep. That this smells how those taste. Absolutely. Because you're getting the shell. Man. It's unsalted. Cinnamon bomb. It is cinnamon. A lot of it, but. It's, it's weird because it's like cinnamon and corn on the nose, mm -hmm. which is the weird part. Um, but it's not off-putting. I tell you what, when mm. you drink it though, the proof 
I, it feels I, perfect. I don't feel this way about new riff products. Uh -huh. I don't feel like the proof helps the age on new riff. I feel oh, like the yeah. proof helps here though. It feels, like I said, it feels perfect. It doesn't uh, feel like I'm drinking that 109 proof. It's spicy, but it's not like proof spicy. Like it's it. all whiskey spice. This is a really good bottle of whiskey. I think if this they just put this in a normal bottle and charge $50 for oh. it, it would be a far more acceptable thing. Yeah. Um, now, they, they do um, barrel picks of this as well in single barrels. This is a small batch, but they do single barrels of these, and our buddy Klein has one that tastes like a payday. Yeah. Salted peanuts with caramel, and it is delicious. Um, it, uh, he paid very little man. for that. It's kind of getting like a mesquite uh, smell on it like the more it sits in a glass. Is it like a soft Texas vibe? Yeah, kind of. Like a very soft garrison. When I think Texas, I think harsh. But this isn't harsh, but it does have like the mesquite that what you're talking about re reminds me of Texas. Mm -hmm. Texas whiskey. Oh, indigestion, dude. It's a little on the, the palate too. Kind of wrenched around the tongue. And I get some of those like uh, darker barrel notes out of the, the back of my tongue. You should drown in this guy. It smells like get, wheat get grain back. smells in real life. You know what? Uh, if you drive by a field and the wind's blowing and the wheat's going like this, grain, huh? it's going like this. What color of wheat? It's like uh, golden. I'm not gonna lie. I, I just assumed you would. What color you think I? I don't know. We live in the middle of fields full of grains. There's one there. Okay. There's one there. Okay. There's literally seven that, that way. That doesn't mean you know what you're talking about. We went about. to high school next to fields of grains. Corn fields, though. That's true. It is corn, beans, beets. I'm gonna be completely honest. I just guess that all grains turn the same color. They all start green, they all end brown. <laughs> Dead? <laughs> Even the pheasant? You, you know get some I, of them, oh, them darker it. barrel notes out no, of it? No, but what? you know what I do? What? I get that nice, dude, it is rich and it's nice. I'm a fan of this whiskey. Um, here's the thing. I'm a fan of a handful of four years. I'm becoming a bigger fan of four years more often recently. It deals with the, I don't, listen, if you're ready for the young note, it deals with the youngness really well. Yeah. Which makes me think they're doing a really good they job. They got a good mash. They got a good mash and a good distillate. Good process. They're good probably DJ. starting with a good white dog here. Yeah. Because after four years, it, the grain, listen, as much as we talk good about it, the graininess is still there. Yeah. It's just not overwhelming. New riff. It, it, it's and kind of got that, that mellow corn vibe to it, like you're talking. Like you yeah, get that, that corn. corn whiskey out yeah. of it. And you know you're drinking a younger whiskey. Yeah. But there's so much complexity that's going around it. It's got some proof that like punches it up a little bit. I, I like you're saying, it masks that young as well. It's a good product. Have you ever had rye toast? No. There's in the transition period from the palate to the to the finish. There's a, a toasted rye note, like a bread, where it's like crunchy. If you were eating it, it would be crunchy, but it's got that spice. It's just in that one transition. It's just a weird note. It's like an off, it's almost like a herbal tea note, almost. Mm -hmm. It's like a weird thing. I think that's like, it's what I'm equating to like the darker barrel notes. Sure, that like probably that. That earthy tea yeah. type deal. Yeah, 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 probably that. Okay, Good. it's your green. Go ahead. $80? Mm -hmm. B minus. C plus. Because I would have one. I think that's why it's a C plus. If we went to a bar and we drank it once, mm -hmm. and I went to a store a week later, and it was seventy nine ninety nine, I'd be like, I don't have that. I would buy one. Okay, you, you I, I just thought of something. I wouldn't stop. You might help up. me out. You might help the grade a little bit. I know. B minus because B -minus. I think they've got a good product that you should support. Okay, now if you find so single gets, barrels of these, yeah. Remember the single barrel we had in Texas? Yeah. One of the worst whiskeys we've ever had in our lives. Yeah. That okay, you know what I just realized? The single barrels in this situation, wild, wild west. Yeah. Because Klein's is amazing. You got that was to try one it. of the worst whiskeys we've ever had in Texas. Yeah, it was something. We walked in there. It's we're like, like a oh, shovel hit you in the face. Fearless. Yeah. We like the bourbon. Oh, bang. Oh. <laughs> Dude, it ruined. I, you talk me up and I talk you down. <laughs> <laughs> it 
No, single barrels try to taste them first. I would pay $79.99 one time for this I bottle. Think, I think you're right, the B minus. Yeah. But it's really I, good. I, I want to support the the distillery the itself so it can keep aging, getting better. Hopefully be worth a little bit more than or like live up to that eighty dollar price tag. Because it's yeah. just it's a little short. Listen, this like, at barrel perf at eight years, maybe six years, this would you wouldn't even complain like, about eighty. I mean Elijah Craig, Larceny. Also Stag, not craft distilleries. None know, of those are craft. I know, I know, but those are all like hitters in the game of barrel But you have to compare them to craft. I want you to try to catch this. And you know what? We're going to sign this out. And this, I don't know if this part is going to stay in. That's up to Sean. He edits these. Okay, so. I'm going to try to bottle flip this and land it on here for those he's watching. He's Dan. I'm Sean. We're the Bourbon Junkies. Check out bourbonjunk.com for merch and glasses and stuff like that. Like, comment, subscribe. Help us out a ton. Check out Patreon. Thank you guys for being here. Love you guys. I don't know if this is in the video or not. 